All right, so good morning, you all. Uh, Monday morning with the Take Heart, and this is my first time on the Take Heart. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Pastor Kevin from uh, the church here, Calvary Chapel. And I'm wearing my Columbia shirt to give a shout out to uh, my friends in Columbia who I haven't seen in a while. And so God bless the church there. This morning, uh, my devotion is going to be in the area of marriage. And so if you have had a difficult time this year with the pandemic and the lockdown, uh, in your marriage, communicating within your marriage. Maybe you've thought about killing your spouse at some point this year uh, and you've had to repent over and over of, of, of those thoughts. Um, well then take heart, I've got some things to help you this morning. Um, in fact, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, Monday morning, for an opportunity to go to your word. I pray that you would speak to us from it in Jesus name, amen. Now communication, if you've ever been to marriage counseling, I talk about it, communication can be very difficult in that we're not boring, born knowing how to communicate. But God helps us out because he gave us uh, two ears and one mouth, two eyes as well, so that we can see and perceive and listen more than we talk. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of James, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath because the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And so we are called to be listeners uh, and to observe our surroundings. And so one of the things I want to talk to you about as far as communication this morning is the speaking part of it and the fact that our words are tools that we use to actually accomplish things within our marriage. And you can use your words to uh, get things going in the direction that you want them to go in. And so in Proverbs chapter 18, if you want to turn there with me, two verses we're going to look at. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Notice it says in verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And verse 22 says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So two beautiful verses. Now, when we say death and life are in the power of the tongue, of course, the charismatics will take that and run with it and talk about the power for you to create your own reality and that's not what the scriptures are giving us. We do not see that in scripture. However, it is saying that you have the power with your mouth, with your tongue, with your words to use them to either build up something or to literally tear it down. And in the realm of marriage, that is exactly what you're doing when you use your words. And so you have to remember, if you look at your spouse and you're not seeing what you desire to see, well then use your words to change that, especially wives. Do you realize how much of a power you have to encourage your husband in a good direction? Uh, and husbands, the same thing with your wives. You, you can use your words to encourage them and to love them and to nurture them. And even when there are times when we need to deal with difficult things and make corrections, how you use your words can be uh, such a huge factor in changing the direction that your marriage is going in and you really need to practice it. You need to learn how to hold your tongue and pray and ask God to give you words that are gonna be helpful, uplifting, uh, encouraging, instructing, and things that are gonna really bless your, your spouse. And so he says here that death and life are in the power of the tongue because notice what he says next in verse 21. He says, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What is he saying? He's saying this, you're literally gonna eat the fruit of what you create with your words. So in your marriage, your marriage is going to be the result of how you use your words to encourage your spouse and get things moving in a positive and a good and a godly and a biblical direction. And so God is giving you this opportunity to think about how you speak to your spouse. What do you say to your spouse? Uh, when's the last time you were in an argument? How much of what you said was unnecessary and, un and not helpful? It was not edifying to your spouse or to your marriage. And it left you in a bad situation for days, maybe even weeks, some of you when all you have to do is yield yourself to the Holy Spirit and turn your heart to the Word of God and then use words to encourage and correct and love uh, and come together and pray. You know, you gotta fight for your marriage and we're, we're doing it wrong because we're planning how to do everything else but we're not planning how we're gonna speak to our spouses. We're not planning how we're going to uh, have time to make, uh, have communication with them. Sit down on a daily basis and just have a good communication with your spouse, develop a friendship. 
because you're going to eat the fruit of whatever it is you produce. So if you're always speaking negatively, if you're always putting your spouse down, if you're always criticizing your spouse, if you're always pointing out the things about your spouse that you do not like or the things that your spouse does that you don't agree with or, or like, if that's all you're doing with your tongue and with your words, then you're going to create a resentful spouse, a spouse that's grumpy and doesn't want to be around you. Uh, and quick to argue with you all the time and you're going to eat the fruit of how you have spoken to your spouse over time. Now, I want to tell you this as I always do when you bring when you begin to make change, when you decide to make change in how you're doing things, the enemy is going to come against that number one and, you, and it's going to be very difficult and your spouse won't respond the way you want immediately. You have to purpose in your heart like that, that, like Daniel and the boys did in the book of Daniel, that I want to make a change. Lord, help me to make a change. Show me how to use my words differently. And I'm going to stay the course, Lord. Help me to stay focused on it no matter how my spouse responds to me. Help me to stay focused on using my words the right way. Not responding in wrath, being patient. Don't let them get you upset because they're still talking the old way. You just decide to talk the right way loving and, 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 and a good words and, and truth. And over time, you'll create a new environment and you'll eat the fruit of that. And that's what the Bible's telling us in verse 21. So death and life is in the power of the tongue and, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And over time, you'll create a new culture and your spouse will become a part of that culture. Because look at what it says in verse 22. He who finds a wife, guys, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Perfect ver ver uh, verse a promise. If you have a wife, then you have a good thing. And God wants to give you favor as a husband, as a leader, as a nurturer. Um, he wants to teach you how to lead. So now you need to turn to him and allow him to begin to work on that. Hey, I don't want to take up a lot of your time this morning, but I want to go through seven tips that I have here to help you with your communication. Seven things I want you to think about. So you need to create a good environment for communication by doing one, stopping what you're doing when it's time to talk to your spouse uh, and, and, and give them your attention. So that might mean turning off the TV, stop doing what you're doing. Spouse, you might need to use some wisdom as in, is this a good time to try to talk to my spouse? Is now the right time when he's cutting the grass and you're trying to interrupt him or when she's actually preparing a meal, guys? You know, maybe not the right time, but when there is a good time, both of you stop what you're doing and sit down with each other. Also, face your spouse. Make eye contact with your, with your wife, guys, when she's talking to you. Ladies, make eye contact with your husband when he's talking to you. Do that as much as possible. Uh, eye contact is good because you can, you can begin to pick up on nonverbal cues better. Uh, be attentive and relax with your spouse when you're talking. Um, let them know that you care about what they're saying. You do that by making like I am with the camera right now. I'm looking at you guys out there in digital land and uh, wishing I could see you face to face and I'm nodding and I'm I'm kind of uh, reassuring. Uh, number four, keep an open mind. Don't assume that you know what your spouse is going to say. Even if you do, don't act like you do. Listen and be humble and ask God to show you their heart. Beyond even what's coming out of their mouth, ask God to reveal your spouse's heart. Number five, don't interrupt and impose solutions unnecessarily listen listen to the whole thing nod interact you know guys sometimes if you think about how women talk with each other sometimes we can pick up on how to talk with them better because when they come together they're like girl for real yeah did that, did that really happen guys we can pick up on that and so when our spouses are trying to talk with us just say man really sweetheart is that what happened whoa how did that make you feel they want conversation we don't have to have a solution just conversation uh, will bless our spouses number six Wait for your spouse to pause and then ask clarifying questions like, OK, sweetheart, is this what I'm understanding? Is this what you meant? I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Uh, and when you do that, they know that you're listening. They know that you care. Um, also, number seven, listen not only with your ears, but also with your eyes. Pick up on nonverbal communication, body language. And when you're talking with your spouse, pray on the inside and ask God to show you and give you discernment for what your spouse is really trying to communicate and try to feel what your spouse is, is saying and what they're feeling and take time. 
pray before, during, and even with your spouse at the end of communication. It's time to make a change. It's time to make our marriages a priority and take heart. God is going to be with you and he is going to help you strengthen your marriage. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for listening to Take Heart this morning. I pray you have a wonderful week. Let's close with prayer now. Father, I thank you for everyone who is watching, especially the marriages and even single people who are watching, Lord God, help. I pray that they pick up on some communication tips that could be helpful for them as well uh, in their, their relationships, even maybe on the job with their bosses. But Lord, I pray that for everyone who's watching this morning, that you would bless their week, that you would strengthen them, that you would keep them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.